Kara, and uh, I studied in California and also at Goldsmiths before my graduate career, or whatever you want to call that. But um, uh, my interest really is in uh, well, art, obviously, art practice, and then um, the history, uh, history of religions, and really the history of our species. So that's where kind of everything grows from. Um, I've been here for three weeks. <laughs> They're going back tomorrow, so <laughs> that's this true. But anyway, anyway, so I'm happy to answer anything that you guys um, have questions about, or we can just start talking about things. And, um, like. Well, we have a list of questions. <laughs> <laughs> Bring <them> on. <laughs> a lot of topics. They don't want to start. Well, do you what want to start by telling us a little bit about yeah. your experience with this project and how you kind of conceived of it? Uh, sure. Actually, it's been kind of a, a very pleasurable experience because I've been working now um, with the collection for over two years. No, just about two years. And uh, for me, that's like well, the most ideal situation I could possibly have in because there's enough time for the conceptual growth at the beginning and then a lot of production time. And, um, but I guess for me, it always grows from the project before. Um, usually, while I'm building one project, I like to start thinking about the framework for the next. And uh, so what preceded this was, um, uh, so just two years ago, it was a piece on um, just the sort of material transcendence that a person can go through uh, while still physically existing on the earth. And that was based in this sort of Sufi practice of um, well, turning, which is like the whirling dervish. Are you guys familiar with the dance at all? Mm -hmm. you? Okay, so. Um, if you're not really familiar with it, it's usually about a 15 minute performance um, where uh, you, uh, these dancers uh, turn continuously, which if you can imagine, I tried doing this at home and it was terrible. <laughs> um, but I think I lasted maybe 30 seconds before I fell over to the coffee table. But, um, but there's this like a, a incredible trance state where you, you sort of um, exit the body and go into a, 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 some sort of liminal zone between consciousness and um, unconsciousness, I suppose. Um, so I was really uh, curious about that state between um, if the movement of a human out of our own, um, uh, I don't know, let's say, out of our normal surroundings is something that comes with either a kind of extreme pleasure or an extreme violence. Uh, so in that, um, I built a sculpture that did a dance just like the Whirling Dervish did but sort of exploded halfway through and then um, entered a space that's phys physically impossible unless you go through this explosive phase. Um, so while I was working on that, I started thinking about this um, idea of how uh, sort of the spaces, well, I'm always interested in the spaces between here and uh, whatever else there is. And in, in the case of death, then uh, um, I was wondering between the physicality of the body versus the disappearance of the body. Um, maybe I could go back a little bit. Um, the whole process of, uh, well actually I guess a lot of what we know about human culture is based on burial practices that we have found uh, uncovered in civilizations from, like, all across the world and particularly in, in the case of mummification was this practice that preserved the body as a vessel for entering whatever that transitory space is. Um, but for, <coughs> for me, as I looked at it, the mummies that come from China, Peru, Egypt, all these civilizations that we're working on uh, immortalizing the body, um, I wanted to take back a step back and see like, what happens with, when there's a disappearance of the body. And what does that mean sort of in, in reflection of our own uh, society today? Uh, if we are, if we're ready to let go of the body, or um, no longer immortalize the body, is in the case of um, well, right now we're looking at uh, cremation as a practice, which is becoming the most contemporary uh, death practice around the world. Um, and in that case, you sort of disappear in a way, um, although you can be immortalized. Um, and then the idea of these new uh, death, eco, eco-friendly death things are, are popping up all over the place now, where the body actually disappears into the earth and um, becomes part of nature again. So if we lose the 
um, if we lose the burial practice, what happens, what does it say about this time in history, uh, you know, this rejection of the body, rejection of um, immortalization? That's where I started, but anyway, we can go into parts of it. <laughs> then how does the body uh, uh, transmigrate from one to the next? So they had to come up with a, with a solution to uh, what is this like inherent consciousness that exists in a body, um, which is exactly the scientists are trying to do. So for this piece, um, it's not directly related to um, one type of religion or um, because the practice of immortalization has happened all over the world, um, it, it just draws from everyone. And uh, yeah, it draws from every religion. How do you feel about the catalog entry very quite explicitly linking Christianity, mm -hmm. Last Supper, angels, all of that stuff? Do you feel like that was has is is this how, how much how far do you agree with what has been written in that? Uh, well, the numbers are right. <laughs> There's thirteen, right? Uh, which in you know it's. It's a number that pops up in lots of different cultures, but for one in particular, it would be Christianity, so the Jesus and the Twelve Disciples, um, which was intentional um, as a reference, but uh, there's this, for me, number sort of come into uh, play because it's a question of the idea of completeness. For the project on Buddhism, everything was in eights because eight was the number of completion, and so 13, you know, it, yeah, it comes up in cultures either as one more than what is perfect, which would be 12. Um, and so what is this question of excess? Who is the excess? Um, that's where the numbers sort of play into it. But I don't think there, it's, uh, I think that it is uh, pretty fair to connect it to ideas like that. Yeah, because yeah, there's the image of the last summer. Yeah, yeah. No, I was just interested because you're statement has no religion, no, there's, not, there's no mention of any specific religion. You, you seem to purposefully sort of put it like, or oh, I know, purposefully, but you haven't included anything. And then there's, um, it's just strongly, yeah. Because yeah. it's the lead off you mentioned. Yeah. And that's Mario's choice, so. Okay. Um, he wanted to, I think, open it up at, as part of the discussion, but not so much dictate what's happening. But yeah, it was a surprise to me as well, so. <laughs> Which I kind of love. So when you discuss like twentieth century American funeral or burial practices, is that still linked to Christianity? Do you think of burial practices in relation to like Christian burial practices? Um, actually, yeah. 
Yeah, it was interesting for me to come here and talk to a lot of Italians about what's happening in their own death practices, which burial is like the 95% choice of um, most people here, even though um, the Pope has said cremation is okay now. Um, yeah, it's played a lot into how the body is dealt with after death. I mean, in Jewish culture, you'll be buried in 24 hours, and there's no embalming, but um, for the American culture, embalming's like been the, um, the main practice, the sort of staple practice um, since uh, the Civil War, um, which uh, actually was developed during the Civil War as, um, uh, as like a wartime invention to preserve the bodies to take back to the families, um, which for me is very interesting because uh, this is like a wartime technology and that's sort of where we are right now um, currently. But, uh, as everyone is shifting from uh, burial to cremation, um, what was important for me for this piece is to uh, take sort of the classic image of um, uh, embalming practice. This is a model off of a 1950s style kind of thing. That's when the shift started happening from um, preserving the body to um, moving in favor of destroy, uh, whatever, uh, cremating the body. I don't want to say destroying the body because it's not so cruel as that. Um, but I think that it's happening all over the world right now. There's a shift in a lot of places, you know, um, in particular uh, South Korea and Japan. Uh, England is on its way uh, now to have in favor of it. Uh, but it really is me it's a really important question now that everyone's aware of global warming and all of these eco issues we are slowly destroying our planet but how can we um, what is the gesture in death that uh, um, sort of atones for all of the things we've destroyed as a as a species really